open it up. Scott, uh, just take us through. Let's start with start at the top and, and take us through uh, what your thoughts were on the main event. You know, I tell you, when uh, the fight between Roman and um, Levon, that was uh, to me that was an exciting fight. It was action packed, went back and forth. I think the right guy won. Uh, going into the second fight um, with Fortune and Daniel James, I, I was really surprised that uh, the outcome was what it was. I mean, you know, Fortune is a, is a guy that we had, you know, spent a lot of time developing and building. But James, that's a big man. When he starts punching, I would not want to be on, uh, on, the, on the end of those big punches. But, you know, a guy weighs 280 pounds, cuts to 261. It's, you know, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. So I'm excited to see what happens with him. And uh, he's got a, a great, great fan base here. And, you know, we'll put him in some more big fights here. Um, take us through the main event. Okay. Uh, you know, se seven months de delayed to figure out who the champ is going to be. And uh, like we talked about the other day, things could be a lot different after seven months. And it, and it looks like they probably were. I'll tell you, I if – if I'm if I'm Corey, I'm really really upset now because you know to me, that first fight he turned the tide in that fight and I thought he was on his way to win that fight, and then uh, the cut happened which he identified and he brought it to uh, Frank Drake's attention and the fight stopped as you guys all know that's 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 what happened, and we went by the rules and if he would just kept punching for four seconds you know he would have been the champ, won the million dollars, and won the tournament belt so you know to fight in his hometown pretty much here. Uh, he, I know he's from Rockford close by and had a, an, a you know, a decent outing, but not enough to beat uh, Nemkov. So it was Nemkov's night. I thought it was a very technical fight, went back and forth. You know, there, there, there were there's some good exchanges, heated exchanges, but, um, you know, to me, I think uh, Nemkov clearly won. If Corey would have not said anything to Frank in April yep. uh, and won the belt, do you think you still would have done a rematch? I mean, would we might have seen this fight here tonight anyways yeah absolutely i mean you know it's you know we would maybe had it would have been a rematch and the mm -hmm. tournament would have been over but uh, i think that um this is a fight that maybe we might run it back another time you know down the line let's see how those guys do nemkov has a big fight against joel romero on uh february 4th in los angeles uh, on cbs which we're really excited about um so i i think he's going to be busy but let's see how these guys you know run the division and and, and see you know when they can you know end up meeting again then we have uh, Usman. You got a new champ now at, at lightweight, mm -hmm. so no, you no longer have brothers as simultaneous champions. That it lasted as long as it did, but mm -hmm. uh, Usman was a huge favorite in this fight, and and it seemed like he just kind of just kind of cruised, right? Yeah, you know what? Um, he started working that length and that distance and those kicks and working on those side kicks to the leg and inside leg, inside kicks, you know, and he 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 just he just seemed like. Uh, Pitbull did not have an answer for the distance that that uh, Usman could create between uh, him and, and Pitbull. So he didn't have an answer, and you know there were some good exchanges by Pitbull throughout the fight. You know, once in a while, but Usman was busy. If you look at his kick count or his striking count, I mean, it's really I think it's pretty impressive. I think it's way up there. So um, you know, clearly he dominated the fight. I don't think you know it was it was really even close, but you know. Pitbull will be back. I think, you know, he's got a lot of gas left in the tank. And you know how it is. Sometimes you just have an off night, you know, and maybe you need time to figure it out. And he'll go back and watch this fight, watch a film, and I'm sure they'll develop uh, a strategy to come back and, uh, you know, to do it again. Do you guys have a time frame yet for when you will announce who is going to be in the, the lightweight Grand Prix? That's something that we'll probably uh, announce soon, but uh, I, I would say maybe in the next two or three weeks. Oh, that, that soon, huh? Yeah, we, we want to we get this thing going sometime early next year. By well. early next year, I mean, w would you start at it at the uh, at the, the show in L.A.? Um, you know what? Show? That hasn't been determined, really. Okay. We have uh, a great main event with Fedor Melianenko fighting Ryan Bader. Right. That's going to be a great rematch. And, um, you know, the past doesn't equal the future, you know, and so anything can happen. Fedor still, you know, has, a like I said, he's still a great striker, and uh, he's still a great fighter, has some good speed. Uh, and this will be his final fight. He's putting the gloves down in the cage. It's going to be a historical moment. I mean, this guy's done it all. He doesn't need to fight anymore, uh, but he wants to fight one last time, and he wanted to fight Bader. He's on a uh, three-fight three or four-fight win streak. I think he's 3-1 in his last four fights, 
and uh, I'd like to rank number three. I think he deserves it, and we're going to put that fight together, and uh, I think that's going to be a great fight. And then Nemkov fighting Yo is going to be another great fight. We're going to add one more fight. The CBS portion will be three fights uh, on television, and then we'll have a great undercard. Um, but uh, we haven't determined uh, what that slot's going to be. Was it any work to uh, to get Fedor to agree to, to do it in L.A.? I mean, I know you guys have talked about wanting to do it in, in Russia mm -hmm. at one point, mm -hmm. and then obviously th th that's never going to happen. But uh, was there any hesitation on his part to – to come over here and, and do it? Or no. did he feel like he had no other option as, as you well? Know, you know what I tell you, it's, uh, you know, the world has changed since we went to uh, Russia and promoted in October. So uh, going back to Russia was not an option. We did have a date, uh, I think it was July 11th uh, at the, uh, in Red Square. It was gonna be a, an amazing fight and that was gonna be Fedor's, uh, you know, final fight. But um, for obvious reasons, we couldn't do it and it just didn't happen. And, you know, he was waiting and waiting and, and he, he wants to fight really bad and he he's going to be ready to go and and he wanted to fight Ryan Bader he wants he wanted to have a revenge fight so you know he he, he could have said look I want you know somebody that's you know maybe ranked number eight nine ten he wants the top guy and so I respect him for that and I tell you he'll be ready he's going to come and he's going to be he's going to be firing on all cylinders on February 4th. Hey Scott, uh, what can you tell us about this new CBS deal it seems like a huge move for the promotion mm -hmm. uh, will it just be this one next fight next event in february or is it going to be all events moving forward well the, the thing is you know we've been uh since the merger we've been working on trying to get this done and uh it's something that um we had an opportunity to grab this slot and this came down i would say in the last you know three to four weeks so we grabbed it and then uh, uh we're going to talk about what comes next after this fight of course we're going to try our best to work hard and, and try to get you know some multi-dates uh, next year, but th it's, it's not, we just haven't gotten that far. But uh, when they told me there was an opportunity to do this fight on February 4th, I grabbed it and I said, let's go. Because, um, you know, one of the beauties about this, this company is that, uh, you know, Viacom owns, you know, uh, Bellator, and, but they also own Showtime and CBS. Uh, but, you know, trying to get all the pieces in place and get everybody aligned, uh, it, it was, it's, it's been, uh, uh, it's just taking time. So now that the time is here, uh, I'm really excited. Uh, to, 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 to put this fight on. It's been a, a long time since, you know, we've had a fight, on, you know, MMA on CBS. So uh, I think it's been 12 years. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited about being on CBS. I'm really excited about the fight card we're going to bring. And it's going to be a great night of fights. It's going to be a celebration of Bellator. Uh, and the top three fights will be uh, on the broadcast. And on the topic of uh, Fedor versus Bader, any clarity on whether Lynn Vassell will wait and fight the winner of that matchup or maybe take another fight in the meantime? Um, I believe he's going to fight in between. So we're talking about him fighting um, sometime in March, maybe in San Jose. We haven't announced the dates, but we're looking at San Jose in March and some of the opponents we're talking about for Lynn Vassell. I know Czech Congo's name has come up. I know Moldowski's name has come up. So uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. And Archie Colgan, he showed out on the prelims tonight, a 50-second TKO finish, moves to 6-0, and 1-0 and as a lightweight. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance he'll be in that lightweight Grand Prix or maybe on the main card of his uh, next event, next fight? You know, the thing about the lightweight division, is it's a really, really stacked, you know, division for us. So he'd have to be, you know, ranked in the top 10, let's say, or top 11, 12. And depending on what happens with some of our athletes, whether they – come into the tournament or they want to fight in a different weight class. We've, we're still having conversations, but um, I think the lightweight is, is going to be a great tournament for next year, and um, the, the participants just have not been picked yet. And then lastly, what did you make of this crowd tonight? It was a great atmosphere to watch yeah, fights. Yeah, you think you guys might come back here next year, 2023? Yeah, listen, you know, we, um, we, we were booked here actually in 2020 before COVID hit. So we were coming to the uh, arena here, and um, – in March, we got shut down. I think our date was in June. So we had planned to come to Chicago. And if you know, before that, we've thrown a lot of great fights. And in my past company, we've had a lot of great fights. A lot of the Fedor fights were here in Chicago. Uh, so, you know, we, uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we really like it here. And I think there's a big fan base. You saw it. I know we sold out tonight. So it was a packed, packed house, and they're passionate. And there's a, little, a lot of good fighters. And what I love about going to cities like this is, you know, finding the next, you know, star finding the next prospect the next blue chip prospect and uh that's what we do when we come into town and give some of the local guys opportunities 
Um, and so we'll be back for sure. Hey, Scott, uh, mm -hmm. speaking of Chicago, you had uh, Daniel James with a very big upset tonight, got a big pop from the crowd. I was wondering what your reaction was to seeing kind of the hometown hero get born. Yeah, you know, you could see the crowd, how passionate they were and how much they loved it. I mean, like I said, that is a big guy. That's a big man throwing some big bombs on you. So, you know, I think that uh, Fortune was a little bit uh, overwhelmed, at, you know, when he got hurt. And, you know, I think they stopped the fight, rightfully so. Um, but uh, we'll definitely have him back. And, and, and keep him going and see and see how uh, how he develops. You know, I mean, is he ready to fight? You know, the top top guys yet? I I, I don't I don't I'm not sure. But you know, we'll we'll definitely get him in the mix, and so he can keep getting the experience. You know, to get to get to that point where he could fight. You know, uh, Moldowski or Bader or you know somebody like that. And you mentioned uh, how happy you were to be back in Chicago, first time since 2019. Mm -hmm. um, but what about being in this, you know, brand new arena as well? I think this arena is only four or five years old. Mm -hmm. um, how did it work tonight? Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful arena. I think it looks really good on TV as well. I think it looked just just looked fantastic, and and it, it's it's uh, you know intimate to where you can you know you can hear the fans and when they you know cheer. It's it's loud in there, and uh, you saw the the reception to some of the athletes. I mean. You know that you could tell there were there were definitely some hometown favorites here tonight. And uh, last one for me, you had uh, Stotts and Sabatello uh, mm -hmm. here to do a little bit of uh, promotion for their upcoming mm -hmm. fight. Um, are you expecting this to be one of the biggest rivalries in Bellator? It seems like you guys are, are pushing it as such. You know what? I I don't think that um, what you're seeing is anything like acting. I think these guys really do not like each other, and uh, and that was really clear to me early on. And so, you know, we're giving them opportunities to talk, uh, speak their mind and, and uh, you know, have, have a chance to get to know each other like they did tonight. But uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be a great fight. And the winner of that fight will go on to the finals and, you know, fight for the million dollars. So this is a really, really, really big moment for both those kids. And, and um, you know, they both came out of nowhere, if you think about it. It's, you know, just, you know, from, from – let's say fighting on the undercard and work their way up and both those kids are super talented and i'm, I'm really looking forward to that fight uh on december 9th at the uh, morgan sun hey scott over here mm -hmm. uh, he said to ask you after usman's win or the fight uh, if you would think he could maybe be bellator's version of habib mm -hmm. so what do you think now yeah you know what um he showed me a lot tonight uh because every time he fights i feel like I sometimes i feel like a, he's a different guy you know and so Today he didn't, you know, he, he definitely didn't want to get into some heated exchanges with Pitbull, so he fought smart, technical, started working that distance, made it really hard for uh, Pitbull to come in, started doing some damage, and then uh, you know there's a couple times he took him down and tried to get the submission and trying to, but you know I've seen other times where he goes straight to the to his wrestling and straight for the takedown, so you know my thought on Usman is he's a dangerous fighter, right? He's got a lot of weapons. So anybody that fights him has to be very, you know, very skilled and very good because this kid is young. He's got, he's got a, a lot to grow, but I, I'll tell you right now, he, he's a dangerous, one of our most dangerous fighters because he's so complete. He's got the complete game, right? When you talk about mixed martial arts, sometimes people have great wrestling. Sometimes they have great jujitsu. Sometimes they have great striking. But he's able to do all three. And, you know, I've been to his camp in San Jose. I've, I've watched him train uh, with his, you know, Habib and Javier and, and all those guys. And, and it's a serious, serious atmosphere. And it's, it's, it's like, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's like watching a pay-per-view fight, you know, that, that you're watching these guys spar. That's a level that you're seeing these guys work out. And uh, there's no joking around in there. They're, they're, they're getting it on. So, you know, when you have that level of expertise training you and teaching you and and guiding you, and 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 the AKA has such a great gym. They probably have 60, 70 fighters there that, you know, most of them are killers or top ranked guys. And, uh, you know, it's it's a dangerous gym, and and he's one of the most dangerous in that gym. So uh, I, I've seen him develop for a while, and he he impressed me tonight. It's kind of crazy for you to see how popular he is already too, because just looking at how early he is, still into his Bellator mm -hmm. career despite mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. becoming champion, like. Mm -hmm when you see how much of a star he kind of mm -hmm. has already become. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? I saw it in his last fight when he fought in Seattle, too. He came out. I mean, there was fans waiting for him, and he had a big ovation when he came in. He had a big ovation when he fought. And so, you know, he's on his way. Believe me, he's this kid's on his way. He's very special. And think about this. He's only 24 years old, right? I mean, that's, that's you know, 
that's and that's one of the reasons why we went after him to to get to get him to sign him is that we knew he was young, we knew he was talented. I watched him in the gym over there, and you know we said we got to grab this kid, and so uh, we went we went out and and uh, were very aggressive and made a deal. And real quick, Scott, uh, you know, just wanted to get your thoughts on something we talked about yesterday mm-hmm. uh, with Dylan Dan- Danis's antics. Uh, I don't know if you saw it today, but he got into a bit of a scuffle with another one of your <laughs> uh, f- past fighters, Anthony Taylor. Did you see this? Uh, what do you think about this y- continual? Y- you know, I, I didn't I didn't see it, but I, I heard about it. So he told me about it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what to think about it, you know. But I'll, I'll, all I say it is Anthony, to Anthony and, and to Dylan, like, you know, you shouldn't be out there fighting for free, <laughs> you know. Is if you want to fight for free, please give me a call. But, you know, you're a professional prize fighter, and, you know, you should fight in the cage or, you know, do it in the ring or, you know. But um, I, I'm not sure what, what the tactics there are. Well, I got to ask, too, like, is it a little bit frustrating at all, though, to see, like, Dylan specifically continue to get into these things? Because people will associate him, you know, with Bellator because it's the last place he's fought, and it's despite it being a while, you know, they'd be like, oh, he's a Bellator guy, and he's causing all this trouble. Is that annoying at all for you? You know, anything? I'll tell you, the thing that um, is – Really, fr- I said frustrating is when you think about Dylan Dennis. The guy has a great ground game. He's one of the best jujitsu guys on the planet at one time, right? So, you know, we signed him. We wanted to develop him. We wanted him to, you know, come into our system and start fighting and fight tougher guys and and work your way up. Um, but I think that um, you know got sidetracked a little bit and you know other things get in the way and I I don't even know how to respond. But you know, to me, he had a lot of potential. You know, and so. You know, we can't make him do it. He's going to want to do it. Uh, but right now, he's he's doing something else. All right, thanks, Scott. Thank you. Hi, Scott. Uh, congrats on another successful event. Uh, Vadim Nemkov showed his heart. You know, he mm-hmm. defended all the takedowns. He did everything right tonight. Got the win. Uh, do you think he's the best light heavyweight in the world? Well, he, he, he is right now, right? Until somebody dethrones him, that's, that's how I feel. I mean, um, you know. I think Corey's had good success against other leagues, you know, champions or runners up, and and Nemkov looked really impressive tonight. So, uh, to me, you know, I can only speak to Bellator actually, and really, it's like, you know, until he gets beat or he gets dethroned, uh, you know, get, loses the crown, you know, I think he's he's definitely you know uh, one of the best on the planet. Scott, one quick one for me. Just looking ahead to 2023, are there any other venues or locations you're looking at that maybe Bellator hasn't gone to that you'd like to target in the near future? Um, absolutely. Um, but I can tell you this. I can't give specific dates, but we are going to revisit some. You know, We like to go to L.A. Uh, we like to go to the Bay Area. We go back to the Mohegan Sun a lot. Uh, we will be revisiting Pechanga. Uh, the casino in, in uh, Temecula. Again, they have this reopened up. Um, they were closed down because of COVID. Um, and, um, you know, we will be going back to Hawaii uh, again this year for the two shows. We do a Friday night military show and Saturday night open to the public. Um, we will be going back to Paris. Um, we're going to be doing the fight in Tokyo at the end of this year uh, against Ryzen. So we do we do have a lot of venues that we've returned to, and we have a couple new ones that you know we're we're going back you know going back to. But um, you know when I think about international expansion, some of the countries that come up in my mind is uh, maybe Amsterdam, you know, uh, maybe Stockholm, uh, something in Europe. But um, domestically, we're c- we're going to continue to you know go to a lot of the cities that that we have gone. But uh, don't be surprised, especially expanding to coming come back to the East Coast. You know, we'll, be, we'll definitely be back in Chicago, but you know, we're gonna uh, we're gonna at some point go back to uh, New York City as well. Great, and then one other quick one for me: you had mentioned the February fourth card as well. I'm uh, just kind of curious for the undercard: will those fights be on Showtime, or will they also be part of the CBS broadcast? So um, the undercard fights will air, uh, like the undercard fights here tonight. You'll be able to find them on Pluto. Uh, the Bellator MMA channel on Pluto TV. You'll be able to find them on the Bellator app, uh, which is, which will take you to the Bellator YouTube channel. Uh, the Showtime app, I believe, which will take you to the Showtime YouTube channel. So there'll be many opportunities to watch it. And uh, I'm not sure if it's airing on Paramount Plus. Um, yeah, so we're still working out some of the details of that, but um, um, you will be able to find it uh, You know where, where you normally find the undercard fights here for us. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.